What is good, everybody? Welcome to the podcast edition of AV Educate. I know, different different look, right? Beard, glasses, beanie, whole different background. Yes, it's Bodie, by the way. Hi, how are we doing tonight? Yeah, so as you can see, it's a little bit different. Omar is uh, on a gig, so he asked uh, a few special invites of people to come in, and it looks like uh, the panelist of AV Tech Talk kind of took over this one. So... Without further ado, I am going to bring in the co-host for tonight, Ed. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, long time no see. I feel like I was just here last week uh, doing some hosting duties. I guess I've been demoted to co-host this week, but that's okay because because uh, I'm glad to play second fiddle to Chris Bodie Brown. So uh, very excited to be here. Thank you guys for joining um, on another episode of the podcast edition. So... I think we should just get right into it and uh, invite our our guest, Disa Cameron, to join us for her panelist spotlight tonight here on the podcast. Welcome. Hey guys. And how are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, yeah. we're excited to have you as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's a. How a, y'all a, doing tonight? Doing great. Uh, very excited. Again, I mean. We just saw you Monday, so it's like twice in a week is it's just a treat. So thank you for coming on. Um, you say treat. I was going to say it's a little too much, but hey, we each have our own varying opinions. No, I'm, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Bodhi, you are not the first man to tell me I'm a little bit much. Okay, I'm not offended. That's funny. Um, <clears throat> so, Disa, um, you know, people may know you from uh, being a panelist on AV Tech Talks. Mm -hmm. Um what uh what i actually found interesting uh when i when i found out that you have 20 years in the av industry can you tell us maybe like how you got your start in av 20 years i mean were you like a child were you like I, like a, to I was, a toddler doing was, av you can't be <laughs> i was in my teens yeah so okay. it was about grade 10 i would say and uh basically we had a, a rock school if you've seen the movie uh, it's actually pretty similar to that. So Steve Sanus, props if he's checking out this. Uh, he was my high school music teacher, and he really helped me flourish both as a musician, but also as a technician. And it wasn't long before they realized that, wow, she she really knows what the heck she's doing. I was operating the scissor lift and oh, <laughs> best manager I've ever worked with. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good to see you, Doc. Hope you're doing good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was, uh, my first console was uh, a Soundcraft, a 36 channel, analog girl all the way. And then I got started with some lighting, uh, follow spot operating, I think I was about to mention there. And yeah, we did have a million dollar theater in my high school. So I was really fortunate wow. to have a lot of tools to get started early. Wow, that's, that's no. Omar says crazy. Omar said we look great. You know, I I, I greatly appreciate that. You know, <laughs> the, if you don't know, that is the man behind this entire community that we have here. AV Educate, by the way. Uh, you know, I prepped a lot for this show just to make sure I look good for you. Oh, so I'm happy we look good. <laughs> that's that's why I, I live to make Omar happy. So <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> so. Tell us, okay, so you started out in, in high school theater, and then where did mm -hmm. you move uh, to from there? Well, so we had uh, somebody come visit our school one day. His name's Kevin Williams, and he currently runs, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's escaping me, Session Wire, uh, which is, lo and behold, it's like he could see the future. It is literally for remote studio work. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so it it's pretty cool but at the time he was running what is now nimbus uh recording art school okay. and back then it was in his basement again he had an amazing studio set up and i was one of three students in his class that he takes on so it's a very it was a very hands-on approach and it was basically condensed from what you would learn in a two-year program into a six-month program wow. and you got tons of studio hours naturally you're only competing with two other people for time so by the time I was about 18 years old I already definitely had you know they say it takes 10,000 hours to really perfect your craft and I definitely had my 10,000 hours at that time and it was really tough to try and find job placement a lot of people didn't take me seriously even though I paid a lot of money and I worked 
full time to put myself through school making $9 an hour. It was terrible. I hated it. <laughs> but you know, my music teacher said, you know what, Disa, just stick, stick it out. You're going to make it. I had a lot of people in my corner really uh, believing in me and, and knowing that I, I, I had what it took. And uh, 15 years later, I'm still with the same company that kind of gave me my first shot. So it was for the release of the Toyota Yaris back in 2005. There was 13 tractor trailers in Whistler. (laughs) Pyrotechnics. We flew in a rigging specialist from Europe. And it was insane. That was my first real gig in AV. And uh, I was doing warehouse work at the time. So unloading a a tractor trailer and pushing cases around a ballroom was not a big deal for me. And so, yeah, I was two girls on a crew of 152 technicians. Wow. One of two girls. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. (laughs) Uh, What's that like, uh, you know, being, you know, one of very few women on a crew? It's interesting. You know, you kind of end up, especially getting started at the age of 19, 20 years old, you're, and I was, brought on as full-time so as full-time local crew you automatically become crew chief we flew in a lot of techs from out of town toronto would come and support the road shows that were coming through and so again really hard to get taken seriously and it takes a lot of diplomacy for sure uh i am a libra so i do have a, a the gift that i can try and make a man do something and make it seem like his idea. So (laughs) that is the approach that I would take definitely if I, if I were to give any of the female technicians out there, you know, like definitely speak your mind when you need to, but at the end of the day, we're all here to do a job together and, and we have to keep it professional. So you have to see the bigger picture, but it's, yeah, it's been a tough road. I've since add some some pretty interesting text messages about experiences being a woman in av so yeah 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 no for sure so i, I imagine. so you are an audio engineer and you're the current vp of mpi ottawa what is that exactly mpi ottawa it stands for meeting professionals international we're a not-for-profit association on a global level and uh we we Basically, we're an association of planners and suppliers that work in the live events industry. Uh, our Ottawa chapter is actually about half and half supplier and planner ratio. And it's really for professional development. So we do education sessions, networking sessions. And all I can say is in terms of being a member, you really get what you give. Uh, being VP, it's it's a lot. It's, you know, sometimes 10, 20 hours of volunteer a week if it's a, a busy week for us. But yeah, I, I definitely enjoy it. And I feel like, uh, especially moving from BC to Ottawa, which we haven't really got into yet, how I ended up here doing what I'm doing now. Um, I feel like I was just kind of implanted into a really buzzing community and just welcomed with open arms. And I really don't know what I would do without that community. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That sounds that, that sounds like it's almost its own full time kind of job. Where do you find the time to do all that? It's, it's, I, I can't imagine how uh, how busy you must be. <laughs> I mean, you you alluded to um, you know working for the company you're with um, for the past fifteen years, but you actually didn't mm-hmm. mention the name of that company. Who are you working with? I'm currently with Encore. And formerly FMAV, and I'm a legacy fresh corn. Okay, what does all of that mean? Uh, well, fresh corn was a privately owned, family run business for over 30 years. And then we were purchased by uh, PSAV about seven years ago now, six years ago. No, sorry, two years ago for that. Uh, Norbert fresh corn retired about seven years ago now. And uh, since then, we've gone through some rebrands and everything like that. And that's how we've ended up as Encore, which is now a global organization. It's it's huge, you know. And, and for me, personally, I get to reap the benefits of better dental. Uh, I finally have eyeglass coverage, which is something I've never had, <laughs> uh, you know. And they do RRSP matching. It's, it's really like 
I know it's a little bit like selling out people's people kind of might think of that but for me I'm a single woman I like to be taken care of so yeah definitely working for a global organization and all these tools in our toolkit especially with the change that we're going through as as such a massive industry uh, I'm loving it I'm excited I got my cheerleader pom-poms on rah 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 <laughs> <laughs> nice um yeah and Encore I mean right now is uh because of a series of acquisitions, they're one of the biggest AV companies worldwide. Is that fairly accurate? 100%. Yeah, there are a few of the brands that won't be coming under the Encore brand. They're mostly our UK partners. Uh, but we are, com we're moving away. We don't have AV in our name anymore for that reason, because we're not just an audiovisual event technology provider. We do content creation. Um, really anything that you can think of, we're able to do it as well as our partners at Concise that uh, have our virtual platform Chime Live. So we really have a, a wide array. And if you're looking to make the shift into our industry, there's definitely a lot of options for you. Okay, before we move a little bit further, Omar asked, is MPI worth it? Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. He must not be listening. I really just said, like, you get what you get 100% tenfold. So if you just sign up for a membership, don't go to events, don't engage in the community, naturally, you're not going to see any ROI on that investment. I'm very fortunate to have employer support. We are a, a, a sponsor, a partner on a on a global level with, with MPI. Um, so that is how I fell into it, but really, honestly, I can tell you it's worth it for sure. For sure. Uh, if you're looking to get to the next level in your career path, uh, I would definitely invest. Great. Yeah. I mean, there are so many organizations that sometimes you, you wonder, but it doesn't sound like, you know, if you want that, where you have to ask that question, but MPI, I looked, just looked over their website and I posted a link in the chat. Um, you know, seems Thank like you. it's one of those great organizations. Um, so I'm, I'm going to actually look into, uh, into that and see if there's a local chapter anywhere near me. Um, but again, I still can't get over how, how much you do and, and <laughs> when do you sleep and everything. I'm every woman. <laughs> it's all in me. Speaking of music, <laughs> didn't you just produce a album? Uh, I'm still working on my album, actually. But uh, yeah, it's been a few years in the making. It'll be my very first album ever. And I've been playing music even longer than I've been doing AV. And I'm a certified audio engineer. So I don't have an excuse of why I haven't done it yet. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited about it. And I've kind of figured out what the theme's going to be. It's going to be called The Writings of Her Years. And it's going to be a concept album. So the whole album, each song is going to be a chapter that tells a story. Oh, so and... you're taking a Coheed and Cambria feel to it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like I that. Love, and I, I think it's Coheed funny that it goes back to that because the last time me and Ed were on the show together, I was actually interviewing Ed and found out that he is a huge Coheed and Cambria fan, which I knew nothing about, which is awesome. <laughs> yep. But how was that recording during COVID? That had to be hard. No, it wasn't hurt at all. It was amazing. I got a little drunk. <laughs> Ed was there. He popped in. I was like, I guess Aah. that's the best way to do it, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it was entertaining. It, I'll say that. It's, it's definitely very different, though. It's not as organic as the studio. And I have to kind of relinquish a lot of the control that I have when I'm in the studio, when I'm there, I say, here's how I want the vocals to go. Oh, no, I got to redo that part. I can hear everything as it's being comped and mixed. And then, you know, right down to any session players I have come in. I, I work with Shane Stevens. I know him from rock school. <laughs> <laughs> so those connections stay with you. And he is such a great drummer. And he's just such a can do guy. You know, it's like, I'll get him to come in and literally do kick, 
snare, kick, snare. And he just does it with a smile on his face. And then I'll say, and by the way, you're going to do a drum solo in this song. No problem, Disa. I got you. So, yeah, I really love working with Shane. He's amazing. And normally I get right in there, right in his face. I grab the sticks out of his hands and I'm like, here's how I want you to do it. Boop, 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 boop. And then he'll do it, right? But I have to relinquish all that control and just – I'm fortunate that it is a team that I've already done quite a few tracks with with my producer, Tim Newhouse at Ear Art Music Studios in Delta, BC. Mad props to him if he's watching. And uh, Shane Stevens as well. They've like both done some tracks with me, so they know kind of what I expect. But I am live on Zoom in real time, so I can see what's going on and hear what's going on, and I can give input. And then uh, Tim actually had my sound patched into the talkback mic. So I was able to, anytime he turned the talk back mic on, I could talk directly to my session players or directly to Timmy and, and tell him what I wanted. And then it was also pretty cool. It was more efficient because normally I'm in the vocal booth and I'm recording and he's got to wait for me to finish my performance until he can start comping. Whereas this way, I was able to just send him tracks and go off and record them, send him some tracks to, for him to comp. So while he's comping my verse... I'm already over here recording the chorus. So it's actually kind of really effective. Yeah, really efficient in that way, for sure. And then naturally, as we moved on to the next part, he'd do some coaching with me and and uh, go, you know, instead of da-da-da-da-da, let's get you to go da-da-da-da-da or whatever, right? So, um, but yeah, I, I do feel like Timmy, working with him really takes my music to the next level. Does uh, knowing the tech side give you a different perspective? That's a great question. I, that's actually what I was thinking <laughs> in my head. Well, it's it's a little different when it comes to my music because I'm there to do art, to be creative. And I am working with, honestly, the man, the myth, the legend. Like, he is phenomenal. He's had a studio of over 20 years and – yeah, he he knows his stuff. So I'm not about to tell Timmy how to do what Timmy <laughs> does. Uh, but definitely, I would say it helps with me understanding if I'm going to sing into a microphone, I understand proximity effect and how moving closer it will make me sound bassier. And I can be a little more sultry and a little more sexy. Whereas if I back off, this is like, I'm going to, I'm going to belt it out. I'm going to talk really loud. So naturally, you know, I understand the theory behind that and I'm not just moving around because I think I should, or with guitar, I understand I got to stay really effing still if I'm going to mic as opposed to plugging in to a DI. But I mean, I am doing electronic dance music. So everything that I'm performing in the studio, I'm not looking to be the Beatles or, you know, any of those classic rock bands where it's one take <laughs> and get it perfect. I'm really just looking for like a good eight count because it's going to be sampled, right? So all of the, all of it, essentially the idea behind Dramatic, which is my artist name, you can check me out. Maybe Ed will be so uh, noble to put a link in the chat for you. Uh, but yeah, the, the I is a one. So Dramatic with a one instead of an I. That's my artist name. And it's electronic dance music where the samples are actual musicians playing the sounds. Uh, so if you hear a shaker, it's very possible that I ordered pizza and that was the chili flakes that it came with. You know, we just get really creative with how we concoct all of those ingredients. That's, that's pretty uh, cool. That's great. And I, uh, you know, I will say, uh, your your producer Timmy. So when uh when I popped in to to check out the session that you guys were working on and you uh you showed me how he was comping uh some of your vocals, uh amazing. I was I was actually with how quick he was doing, I was watching it and I was paying attention and uh I was very impressed with uh he's, with he's a machine. Yeah, no, super quick, super efficient. Um, and he hunts. He's hunting. He's hunting. He knows exactly what he hears in his head, and he's hunting. Where? Which one did she do it on? Yeah, yeah. no, it, it was it was really good. And you know, uh, I was interested in the process. That's why I actually asked if I could pop in, and and you know how what technology you guys were using, and how you were recording and sending your tracks. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that whole process was interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting. So I have right now my little Mbox 2. I got it 
back in like 2006 when I decided I bought a fancy Mac and I was going to have a, a modest home studio setup. And uh, it's still working. It was a little bit interesting to try and find the uh, what is it? The driver. Sorry, I'm trying to pull out all these techie terms here. And yeah, so I found the driver that took a few hours. And then I needed to find a program to record with that took a few hours. And then finally, I'm like, I'm gonna I'm hit the easy button on this. And I and I hit up Ed. I'm like, hey, Ed. So because I finally I got it working. I found like a aud aud audacity. Audacity, yeah. Audacity, yeah. So I, I was able to record and then I had another consultation call with Timmy and he's like, well, if you're, because I told him I rented this keyboard behind me. I don't know if you can see it. I call her Black Beauty. She's lovely. But uh, I said, yeah, I, I want to do, I, I want to do some keys because I don't know what I'm going to do, right? I just, I play everything. So um, uh, beauty of a multi-instrumentalist, it's like, I don't want to sample. I just want to play it and then we'll make it sound the way that we want it to sound. So he's like, well, then you need MIDI. And I'm like, oh gosh, this thing's not doing MIDI. And so Ed found Reaper. So I've been using Reaper for that and it's worked out great. And then as Omar uh, alluded to, obviously I can figure out how to do all this stuff on my own because I paid for a piece of paper <laughs> that says I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then, you know, I just kind of reaffirmed throughout the journey, like, are these the levels that you'd like? Make sure nothing's clipping. And then I bought, uh, you know, like a bubble to go around it to get rid of any room noise. So I did uh, spend a little bit of money. And then this mic itself, I've already had this for a number of years. And my DJ headphones. Um, so, so yeah, I do already have a few of the tools to put it all together. It was just a matter of making it work. And then I don't want to waste anyone's time. I want to show up prepared and ready to record. I don't want to be sitting there troubleshooting why the MIDI's not working or anything like that. So yeah, definitely you need a lot more preparation for sure. So a few consultation calls with your producer, understand what it is that you're looking to achieve. But I'll be honest, I really don't come prepared with the actual music. <laughs> I like have an idea and I have maybe a couple sample tracks that have inspired the vibe. And we kind of figure out it's like mathematics. It's like, what BPM do we want it? This one's too fast. This one's too slow. Or, you know, I actually worked with Nicholas Falcons. He's a coworker of mine at Encore. And he makes beats and he he collaborated with me on this project. So uh, very different sound having another person in, in the equation, which is very exciting for me. I really don't want an, an album where every song sounds the same. And I feel like there's a little bit of something for everyone. There's some rock and roll. There's some hip hop. There's uh, one of my tracks I've already got booked uh, with Timmy, Timmy to do in late February is going to be a, a full on house dance so that'll be pretty cool <laughs> and then at the same time i'm going to do a totally stripped down just me and an acoustic guitar kind of power track so yeah so i feel like there's going to be a little bit of something for everyone yeah i, I mean i've heard um a handful of those tracks you gave me a, a sneak preview of them and uh it is a very well-rounded uh collection so far from what i've heard and uh for Someone who calls himself an EDM artist, there was a lot of live instruments that you can tell. There's like guitar solos and some stuff, and and you know I can hear that there was you know live keys, not not pro. Uh, you know the drums were played by a person. They might be looped afterwards, but uh, you know you can tell that there's uh, authentic uh, musicianship going on in these tracks. Not not just a not what I typically think of uh, when I think of EDM being that that's not something I, I listen to on a regular um but it was uh it definitely definitely pretty cool definitely well cool. it's it's hard to put me into a genre so that's why i'm going with electronic dance uh because i am trying to do something that's new and innovative but also have <clears throat> you know lyrics that speak to the youth you know i kind of uh, hot boots in my yoga pilates camp you know like i kind of make up words and i talk about like swiping right and double tapping and <laughs> <laughs> I try and be relatable to to a younger audience that they're gonna they're gonna be into it. So, and my my uh, my new single "Be Who You Are," which is available for a free download or pay what you want on my website dramatic.ca. 
uh, it is about online dating and it's kind of a call to action to just be who you are and stop being fake on your profile and just uh, embrace the skin that you're in. Well, as somebody who actually really enjoys EDM dance, I'm gonna have to check it out uh, because I definitely go super deep in not just your your scrape surface Skrillex or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I'm Dead Mouth Five. I'm uh, Bat. Uh, I don't even know if I can really say it. Bastard Lee Ra, which is a straight EDM dance. It's like a crossfade of ska and Slayer. Uh, if anybody knows <laughs> who those bands are, um, but. I love EDM and it's like a touch soul point for me. And I really like EDM when it comes to lyrical EDM as well. Um, instead of just beat and electronic, I do mm-hmm. love lyrical e- EDM. So definitely yeah. have to well, check that out. You have the lighting for it. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it go faster too. Oh. <laughs> you know, we're getting uh, to almost half past oomsa, the oomsa, hour. Oomsa, 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 oomsa. Oh, nice, nice, Chris. Uh, I gotta shut that down. So, uh, you, you gotta get that on. Uh, you gotta get that on somebody s- out. You gotta get that on sound activation. Uh, it actually is. I just haven't set that up yet, and I'm afraid to set that up because of. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this isn't about me. This is about Disa. Yep. So we'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> but Show me get- the lie. <laughs> we're getting close to half past the hour. So uh, if you have any questions out there, uh, you know, get them in to the comments. Uh, Grill you know, Omar- me. Omar has, uh, you know, put in a, a couple great questions. Um, again, Omar, it looks like he was asking. I haven't uh, even talked about all the things that I do yet, Ed. <laughs> and I saw Omar wants to know where I find the time, but I also uh, manage a hip hop artist by the name of Robbie G. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, so is that? Um, I I have seen, and I think uh, we might have talked about. You used to do mm-hmm. consulting and managing. Mm-hmm. You had your I ran own company. A, I ran a production company for about seven years. Okay. And at the height of it, I did have about 12 bands on my roster. We were sending wow. them on cross Canada, North American tours. One of my bands was signed to uh, distribution through universal. So yeah, a few, a few of them were growing to be pretty big names and doc who you saw comment uh, right when this first started. Uh, he was one of my, one of my, uh, bands that I, I worked with. I worked with them for about three years, I believe. But oh, yeah, cool. yeah, I kind of get like, I feel like I gave up on my music to pursue management and to pursue the technical side of things. And now that I'm here in my mid 30s, not having a midlife crisis, but it's like, you know, I have all of this potential and I have a message to, to, to send. And I, I think it's time for people to hear it and for me to just buckle down and do it. Oh, you're still watching, Doc. Oh, you're so sweet. Yes. Yeah, you guys broke up on me. Oh, it was so sad. But I, I, is there maybe an Inside It Field revival in the mix? Huh? Huh? Come on, Doc. Come on. <laughs> so uh, tell and- us, so you're managing an artist now too? Yeah, Robbie G, he is a Canadian hip hop artist and he is a very rare breed. He's literally a full time musician and he's had to completely pivot his own entrepreneurial business due to COVID. He successfully did 26 shows in 2020, if you can believe it. Uh, Part of that was with a a headliner named Mad Child, who you might recall from a, a little group called Swollen Members. So, yeah, he's definitely worked with some huge notable artists. He's open for Snoop Dogg, Sean Paul, Sean Kingston, Mob Deep, like all sorts of huge, huge guys. Mm. And uh, he's just such a genuine, he's got that it factor. He's got the look, he's got the personality. He just totally lights up a room, even through your phone. And I'm (laughs) sure there's tons of his fans on here right now, probably commenting or uh, I don't know if you can hit the heart button or anything. (laughs) I can't see it on Facebook, but... Uh, yeah, no, it's been great to work with him. I've been working with him since November 2019, but I've known him for about four years. Wow, great. That's so, mm-hmm. uh, again, how do you find the time? <laughs> that's, that's serious. Like... We, we all get the same 24 hours in a day, but I can tell you that I live by my calendar. If it's not in my calendar, I'm probably going to forget. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. Um, so what else do you have going on you meant you kind of alluded to 
some stuff that that you have uh, that you're working on have you been doing any big projects or what do you got going on that you can talk about <laughs> that i can talk about oh i guess for work you mean uh yeah anything whatever either way i'm sure i'm <laughs> sure there's stuff for work that you you can't talk about i i know you guys i want to know that one how many I hours know that do one I right sleep? there yeah oh, uh yeah. i would say maybe about six hours a night yeah i would have guessed about two but yeah that's there's just this, me there's this uh there's this thing with arnold schwarzenegger it's one of those motivational videos and he goes sleep faster you don't need to sleep for eight hours you can sleep for four you can sleep for six just sleep faster that's funny <laughs> that's funny oh, that's great <laughs> yeah so tell us what uh, what else do you have coming up what's going on what do I have going on? Uh, well, I mean, I, I am doing a, a large conference. It was a nine month contract and that's concluding in June, 2021. And then I'm still working towards getting their program re-signed for the fall. And they've decided not to do a nine month long program because it's nine months of planning a giant conference once a month. So uh, yeah, it's like doing what they would normally do for one conference every month. So naturally, they've decided to to trim that down. Uh, my market is mostly association, but I do have a little bit of corporate. Uh, so I do. I am going to be talking with uh, Shopify about helping them get on our presentation stages and get some some more high caliber pre recording done for that. And I think that we're just kind of moving into an era of hybrid. Everyone's really curious with hybrid. So from the Encore standpoint, we are going to be rolling out some educational series, our Professional Edge series, uh, which will be available at Encore-Can.com. Uh, we're going to be rolling that out, and it's going to be all about how to hybrid. So that'll be the next era of, of our education, whereas our education in 2020 was all about how to how to go virtual and how to still create an engaging event that's not considered just another Zoom meeting or just another Facebook Live. Right, right. <laughs> I, I I feel I feel uh attacked. No. <laughs> <laughs> attacked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm leaving you gentlemen speechless over here. I know, I know. Um so I think uh Chris, did we, have, did we have a couple questions come in? We did have a few come in. Uh, Derek Kohler wants to know how many tracks is going to be on your new album? Oh, I'm just going for 10. Okay. And how many, yeah. and you have what? How many already? Four? I need completed. to do four more songs. <laughs> so wait, hold on. With the metric system, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. Omar's yeah. coming in with some rapid fire questions as well. He wants to know who cuts your hair. I cut it myself. <laughs> well, okay. This is my COVID at home hairdo. My my at home and, balayage. Uh, Any Victoria hair? Victoria absolutely uh, backed that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my older sister. Hey sis, what's going on? He also sweet legs. To... <laughs> Who's rocking them? <laughs> He also want to know, are you a late nighter or an early riser? Both. <laughs> yeah, if you're only sleeping six hours, you got to be, right? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you kind of yeah. are, right? Yeah. I sleep like 11 to 6, 12 to 6 kind of thing. Yeah, I, I got to admit, I haven't been sleeping the greatest since COVID happened. I just, all the anxiety and not knowing when this is going to end. It's totally freaking me out all the time and when i'm in bed is the only time i have time to think about it so have you uh so if you only sleep six hours have you <laughs> tried doing like that spaced out sleeping where you do like two hours then two hours then two hours when i it was doesn't sleep, work when I, tried. <laughs> when I was when i was on shift work and i was djing i did that i yeah, because I would be DJing till maybe 1, 2 in the morning, getting home around 3, and then I'd have a call time of 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. to be back at the hotel. And then I would have another DJ gig if it was a Saturday that I was working at the hotel. I'd have another DJ gig at 6 or 7. So I'd get mm. off around 3 and then go home, sleep for an hour. So, yeah, I totally – that's that's the hustle. That's the hustle of my 20s is power naps for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's been studies on that. Like I, I, I years ago saw a study where it was like they did, uh, you know, six or 12 half hour naps or something like mm -hmm. that or six half hour naps. And then like 
uh, you know, three hour naps throughout the day versus like a three hour sleep or six, whatever it was. And they broke I it up. I can sleep when I'm dead. Right. Well, <laughs> that's my theory. Sleep faster, right? That's yeah, gonna, exactly. I really sleep faster. Sleep faster. That down. <laughs> the power nap Donald's. worked for me in my 20s, but now that I'm in my 30s, that doesn't work very well at all. It just makes me more tired. Or tired, or should I? I don't know what the proper. Listen, I don't even try English. It's I not my just, thing. I have to say <sighs> thank thank you so much to the people who are tuning in right now. I am floored that twenty four people want to hear what I have to say. Uh, I'm blushing, <laughs> and thank you to adding Bodhi as well. You guys are fabulous. No, I know pleasure. Omar just threw you right into this. Like, <laughs> what the heck, Omar? You invited me to come here, and you're not even here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely our pleasure. Uh, one question that I'm going to ask, uh, how did you, you're a panelist on AV Tech Talks. How yeah. did you hear about us? Uh, it's uh, actually my coworker slash ex. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Drama. Uh, he was like, yeah, because we just got into vMix. He's like, yeah, there's like this webinar about vMix. I'm going to check it out. I'm like, I'm going to check it out too. And as a salesperson account manager at Encore, I I have to sell these features to our clients and I have no idea what the heck vMix is and what the heck vMix does. So I'm sitting there and I don't think I could recall anything that you guys talked about <laughs> for the two hours, but I asked a few really stupid questions like, oh, can you live stream uh, two live streams at once or something <laughs> silly like that? Like I was just like, I got to look like I kind of am engaged. And then... I saw a link or a te I think it was a text. I had to text yeah, somebody. Yeah, we used to have a text number, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. tell me about the text thing. Uh, I, Omar had set that up. He had a it, we figured yeah, we... it would be a, a cool way to, you know, to get people in. Uh, yeah. they could just text a number and it went to like a uh one of those Google voice numbers, so it wasn't like he wasn't putting his own you know, he wasn't like, hey, everybody, here's my digits, you know, it was, <laughs> uh, you know, a number that wasn't going to uh, get it didn't matter if it got spammed and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was just a, a different thing than, you know, like, here's an email address or or whatnot. But uh, yeah, so I texted it. Cool. <laughs> and that's how that's how you that's how you found us. huh? <laughs> yeah. So I texted it and then you guys invited me to come on as a panelist. And I was like. I don't really know much about technology anymore. Like when I was a technician, it was still RGB cable and analog mixers and digital consoles had just come, but it was still on our CapEx. So we only had a very limited uh, quantity. And I just remember getting an LS9 stuck in front of me for a show and the friggin' mute button is opposite. So when the mic is on, the light is on. And it was so confusing right. for me. And I just had to literally teach myself. <laughs> right. Like yeah. there wasn't a magical person who came and showed me how to use the digital consoles. So yeah, I was still, uh, that was how I learned. Uh, fake it till you make it is my motto. <laughs> Let me tell <laughs> you. I just, yeah. Oh, we got these new Barco 902s. Uh, you're going to use this on your show. And I'm like, there's no... Uh, VGA, DVI, it's all digital, SDI, HDMI. We don't even have these cables yet. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it it was very interesting. And then they decided I could make a lot more money for the company by because I was so great at dealing with the clients and the customer service side of things that they put me on a desk. Uh, so. Speaking of the man, he's here. Finally, hello. <laughs> I don't know if he was ready for us I, to pop him in, but I think he's, he's in a ballroom right now. That's what it kind of looks like. He's working. I think he's Mike. We're so jealous. You're <laughs> muted. Quoted 2021. <laughs> uh, all right. Just let me let me know when you're ready. We'll throw you out. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, so anyways, as we were saying, I was uh, RGB analog days and uh, yeah. <laughs> so things have changed really quickly and you guys have been a huge support system for me. Now, has uh, has being on the show or have you picked up anything from the show that has helped you uh, since you've been a panelist? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, and I actually just show up with my questions. Uh, Omar, we're getting a lot of background noise from you, bro. 
Sorry. Um. <laughs> Maniacs over here. Wow. They're just, you know. Put him on big. Bodie. That's what, that's what no, this is all about you. Don't worry about this. It's all about you. No. It's, Show not, us. It's all, about, it's all about you. So I'm on a set in Texas right now doing a virtual event. So this is like our virtual sets, our stage. Oh, nice. I'm with uh, <laughs> Pro Audio Video, E2, Playback okay. Graphics, bunch of Zoom stuff, yeah. bunch Here's of audio. Nice. He's all. I'm about to watch some TV tonight. The guys that okay. are back here: Maverick, Lewis, <laughs> Andres, Paco, oh, the man. Hey guys. I can do without this <laughs> you know they're in the states. Nobody's wearing masks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Yeah. like good. laughs> we just had dinner. We were eating. Yeah. I thought you could. Oh without, yeah, when you're yeah, eating. yeah. You can eat without a mask on. I'm yeah, pretty you sure you guys on. are on in each other's. I was bubble start, look. I still got my salad. I'm still waiting to eat. Well, good to see you, Omar. Thanks for finally showing up to host your own. Oh, you called me out, so as soon as it ended, I don't have to jump on now. Yeah, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't not show up now. <laughs> so, Aaron Ledsim said, "How do you feel? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not even good with names." Aaron Ledsham. Oh my gosh! Blast from about the past. Sharing, having to share the award for recording arts in high school. <laughs> kind of oh yeah. That. I totally forgot about that, Aaron. You could have had it. You know, I didn't even show up to walk across the stage. Believe it or not, I grew up, I hated being in front of people and being on stage. Like, it was the, my biggest fear. And then I went on to become a performer and an entertainer and a musician. <laughs> yeah, Scott, thanks for agreeing with me. Oh, gee, what up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing this up right now. Sorry. Yeah. That, that was, yeah. thanks, thanks for the tour. Uh, Chris, I guess I guess you and I weren't doing well enough, so I Omar had to not. come in and, I mean, and start pressing in and buttons. Start pressing buttons and taking over. I mean, yeah. I see how it is. It's all good, brother. It's all I, I'm, good. All right, I'm just a face now. I'm just, I'm just here. All in a china <laughs> shop over here. No, he absolutely is. I'm the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, what are these questions you had prepared to ask me, Omar, that you didn't well, ask anybody them. else? We've been they asking. We got it. Uh, yeah. His one question. I, I've been trying to dive more into MPI, though. I want yeah, to hear more about these benefits. I was going to say, he keeps digging into this, like, MPI, like it's some magic gold river that you need to expose. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, he, you you want to kind of dig more into that? No, goes, just, he wants to I'm know just curious. More about why? MPI. Right. Why MPI versus any other option? Why MPI? Yeah. Why uh, MPI versus, let's say, like getting an Avixia certification or getting a uh, a project management certification from from PMI, Project Management Institute. Why? Why? Um, yeah. Why? Well, it it connects me to the planner side of things. It gives me a different lens to to view the industry from, and gives me the ability to really empathize with what like put the shoe on the other foot, so to speak. Uh, it also gives you a sense of community. So if there's any anything that you want or need for, for professional development, there's always somebody that you can go to for that, uh, as well as the vendor side. You know, like it's it's not inexpensive to, to do. It is an investment. It's an investment from a company standpoint and a personal standpoint. You know, you're even if I do have employer support, I'm still giving up my time to volunteer. And especially at the board level, there's uh, a lot. It, it really is. You have to treat it like an unpaid job, right? Like you still have to be very professional and very tactful right. in your approach. And yeah, so I, I definitely think that uh, MPI is a great, a great community to become a part of if you're looking to advance your career. And what about Avixia? Did you look into Avixia with their project management side? Uh, I haven't looked into that. No, no. Why don't you share more about that? Is you seem very passionate on the topic? But. No, I'm just, I, you know. So there's always a, there's always other avenues of, of resources, right, or educational yeah. resources out there. Yeah, for they me, all cater to a different if, market. If I had uh, any choice in the matter, I would probably go towards the event design collective. 
I'm mm-hmm. really good friends with Anthony Vade, who's the new North American representative. And basically you get a CED, so you become a certified event designer. And that's more about the behavior change, so that entering and exiting behaviors that happen at events. But for us in the industry where we're at, we're we're a part of that event. We're a part of that transformation and we're about we're a part of that change. So our stakeholders are our clients the people who are paying the bills, sponsors, attendees. And it's really about narrowing down those expectations of who are you going to please because you cannot produce an event that's going to please everybody. And so as a partner, I'm not here to just give you a screen and a projector and a vMix and a live stream and a whatever, right? I'm not, I'm not just right. here to give you the nuts and bolts. I'm here to help you create that change and create that transformation. So I feel like, you know, it's very important for us to to be able to put our shoe on the other foot and understand our clients' needs more intimately. So would you say for, for anybody who's a, a technician or an engineer out there who wants to move over to the management side, this is a good course for you to take to kind of get yourself in the door a little bit and kind of meet those other, other ends? I've actually heard a lot better things about the PCMA events, uh, digital event strategist, the DES. I've heard really good stuff. Uh, things about that but honestly our professional edge series that we had rolled out in 2020 and that we're going to be bringing back in 2021 with the focus on how to hybrid that does give you your cmp hours if you were looking if you're looking to be a certified meeting planner as well Uh, but that's going to be our internal and uh, people like scott richards who are in the chat now are going to be a part of that and educating our clients on on the next wave Cool, cool. So I see, I see down here we got, and I'll let Chris read this one out. Uh, I'll, I'll butcher it. Randy. <clears throat> yeah, he says, D, so what motivates and encourages you for your personal self-development? Well, I, I've always been ambitious. You know, I, I came from a, a rough up, upbringing. I definitely could be sitting here on EI and claiming to have, you know, mental disorders or whatnot and not be able to work and, feeding off the system and that would really was kind of the the cards I was dealt and the upbringing that I had and I chose you know this isn't good enough for me so I had five jobs <laughs> and I worked my butt off I put myself through school and I created a name for myself in the industry and I would say that that fuel that fire to get the heck out of Dodge and and build something for myself. You know, I own my home. I'm 35. I'm almost mortgage free. Like there's not very many people that can say that. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So that's impressive. For me, for me, that fuel and that fire is always there. And I feel like life is a moving goalpost. And for me, what my struggle is, is fulfillment. I read the book by Tony Robbins and he talks about how climbing the mountain of life, it's really important for us to stop and pause and take a breath and reflect back on our achievements and really like take that in. That's my struggle. For me, I have no problem moving the needle and pushing ahead. You know, as soon as COVID happened and my my company was like, oh, we're rolling out Chime Live and we're doing virtual events. I'm like, okay, so um, I'm going to need to know everything there is to know about Chime Live. And now if you need it built, I can do pretty much anything except for like super custom CSS pushing customization. I can do whatever, like load bios, agendas, whatever, delegate lists. So like I really just kind of always want to wrap my head around it. I was a little bit of a nerd in high school. Uh, Aaron can attest to that because he was also the best of the best. Hence why we had to share an award because you couldn't pick who was geekier, I guess. But (laughs) But yeah, so I would say personal development should be a lifelong journey. And uh, anytime I hear people say, oh, have you read this book? I always write it down. So so right now I'm, I'm listening to an audio book called Lynchpin by Seth Gobbin, Godin. And then I'm also reading Principles by Ray Dalio. So, you know, two very different books, uh, but both are really great for professional development. And uh, feel free to slide into my DMs. I can give you some good reading material to get you started on your journey for sure. 
So I, I want to backtrack real quick because I, I was trying to tune in. I didn't get to hear it all. And, and I'll throw this to Ed a little bit. Is there anything we didn't cover uh, when it comes to this recording from home with the whole COVID scenario? I was, um, you know, I heard a little bit about the, the, the audio guy you had and your background and everything. And I was really impressed that, or my first thought was actually, honestly, my first thought was, do you ever get annoyed that you know more than the guy behind the board sometimes when he's telling you, oh, we can't do that. And you're like, you could totally do that. Uh <laughs> Not, in, this, not, not in the studio, but I get that at work all the time. <laughs> and, and again, yeah. Ed, I'll let, you, I'll let you run with that one because you, you're the audio man more than me. Well, you know, when multi-pinning came out, right? And uh, right. they were like, oh, we can't, we can't make a custom gallery view and put people in order by name. And I'm like, yeah, you can. Like, you can't con the con artist here. He's just like, I'm on a show every Monday that does this. Don't <laughs> mess with me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you guys have been an amazing support system. And I talk about you guys in every sales meeting, every production meeting I go to. I Like, I show up knowing a lot more than a typical sales girl would know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, people might see me walk around and dressing pretty and being outgoing and they think I'm just like, you know, a, I, I don't want to say a fluff girl because that's not appropriate, but you know, they just think, oh, she's just another sales girl. And then when you really, when you do a show with me and you see how hands on I am, I'm not afraid to put on my PPE and my steel toes and get in the back of that tractor trailer. That's where people are like, wow, like she really, she's on our level. She, she gets it. Uh, DVE well, stores is here. Uh, yeah, he he says it's a great book. I agree. What was that? Is that my twin? Is my twin trolling? Yeah, I was gonna ask. So what, what's <laughs> Ali Ka Ali hey, Twinsies. She just said always Daisy always proves people wrong. If someone tells her she can't do it, she will show she can. You wanna you wanna dive into that a little bit? Is there a specific uh, scenario she's well, picking out here? Yeah, she knows. real quick, Omar, knows. it's Disa. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just have to bust your chops. I've been saying that for months now, and she hasn't corrected me. I correct you every show. What are you talking about? Uh, this, this is so much fun. Let me tell you right now. So we should do an episode on Omar where you guys can all just uh, roast me. Is that what we're saying? Just roast me. Look, okay. uh, well, we can definitely pin that down. And I Great absolutely, no, absolutely so would be an amazing Wednesday night show. And we'll, we'll literally call it the Roast of AV Educate. I just see Ed's eyes like I got tons oh, of material ready. It's the so funny. The Roast of AV Educate. Let's do no, this. It's, it, I was just thinking how we, if we do that, we'll all have to phonetically write our names, though, oh. so that he knows how to say them. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm dyslexic, so I'll probably get it wrong either way. I'll that mess it up my wrong head. about. Um, <laughs> Disa, I did want to ask you about, um, I, I saw something that you... Um, and I don't know if you've uh, what where in the process you are, but uh, I had heard that you're applying for the um, the Ottawa forty under forty. Is that? <laughs> oh gosh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, is there, uh, is there is there a test and you're, you're late to the quiz now? <laughs> no, it's it's coming up, and I need to I need to apply for it. I That's I have I mean. a few more years left if I don't get in, but right. uh, definitely I've been encouraged by. Uh, somebody that I know, a friend here in Ottawa who works uh, for the Ottawa Business Journal. And he was like, Disa, he keeps sending it to me. He's like, Disa, you got to apply for this. He's done it every year. And then every year I don't apply. So who knows? You never know. I'll I'll be hitting you guys up for a vote, though, for yeah. sure. Just, oh, yeah. just share this episode uh, because clearly you, you're a top contender with all that you do. <laughs> Uh, I'm serious. I don't see how you find time to sleep at, at all. But I mean, that's I, just me. Yeah. Yeah. No, when I'm that, when I'm as busy as it sounds like you are all the time, I'm not getting six hours of sleep. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm not that efficient. So I end up uh, I am getting a lot less. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't believe you find that that much time to even get a block of sleep with how much you're doing. It's it's crazy. I, I just want to bring this one up. So Scott Richards, hopefully I didn't mess that one up. As an AV technician, you must have seen some great keynote and motivational speakers, especially in, in 2020 with everything you're doing. Are there any that are particularly memorable? Oh, you're putting me on the spot, Scott. You got to ask me about the horror stories. Those are way more memorable. But uh, I would say, you know, way back, way back, way, way, way back. Uh, there was a gentleman. I don't even remember his name. I have his book, actually. But he went through the desert with nothing but his the clothes on his back and some like a water bottle and figured out how to get 
water from the plants and it was insane and it was all about uh you know resi- being resilient and it was a one of those empowering talks and i would say you know it was interestingly enough i was thinking about buying my first place so i had a goal to buy my first place by the age of 25 and i got the keys for my 425 foot studio apartment in new westminster bc two days after my 26th birthday. So it was a little bit late on that goalpost. But, you know, I was sitting in one of those real estate. It was like an update for realtors. And I was doing sound. It was a stupid little, you know, Mackie 1604 console and just making sure the podium mic is good. And uh, they said, you know, the right time to buy is when it's the right time for you. Because, you know, everyone kept telling me to wait on the market and da, 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 da. So, yeah. So, so little things like that. uh, Definitely, I would say, yeah, those are the two. But it's been a while. Like, Scott, I don't really see a lot of the content that happens. So, and you probably know, we're just verifying that it looks good and sounds good. It's not so much about uh, getting into the actually enjoying it. Ed, I'll let you take this one. You muted, Ed, you muted. muted. Yeah, you're muted, Ed. Sorry about that. My uh my it's bedtime, so my three year old is of course running around <laughs> screaming. So I've muted it. Sorry about that. Uh Randy Regis says, due to the pandemic, how do you increase your marketing strategies towards the virtual platform? Well, Randy, fortunately I don't really have to increase marketing strategies. I'm not in the marketing team, but they do uh send out mailers to let our clients know what are happening. Uh, When the pandemic first started, our angle was the AGM. So we were, you know, this is how your AGM could go virtual. And then around Christmas, we were obviously uh, leaning towards the holiday parties and some of the tools that we have for that. And uh, honestly, there's, you know, when any new product comes to market, there's kind of a, a lull before it really takes off and what the difference between and you'll learn this in principles or actually good to great is the book that I read before principles that talks about what takes a small startup company and makes them massive and it's really that word of mouth so as we get more clients using our platform they are telling their friends they're coming back they're booking more meetings they're seeing what's possible and um, I would say, you know, uh, our competition event will be the CEO posted a pretty uh, interesting status update. He had a render of Blockbuster and it said, you know, what if Netflix had decided that they wanted their online video or viewing service to emulate a real life movie store? And for me, my first thought is, well, why wouldn't we give the client what they want? But he was saying, you know, all these planners who are trying to make their virtual platform look like a real ballroom, create a lobby, create a ballroom experience, create an exhibit hall experience of a render of an exhibit hall. Like, why wouldn't you try and reimagine your event and and create something brand new and fresh that has never been done before? And, uh, yeah, so I just thought that was really cool and really neat. And so I think as more people get more comfortable and maybe let go of the old and be more creative and innovative, and it's going to be people like us that are in the industry that have already been doing it for, uh, you know, for me, I actually say that I've started uh, doing virtual and hybrid Uh, about 10 years ago as a technician, because I did, we would be broadcasting a town hall from Toronto and I'd be in Vancouver. And, you know, back then people didn't have the capability to watch a live stream in their home. It just wasn't a thing. I don't even think we had like this dial up one megabit connection, whatever. Right. So, uh, so I would set up a big screen and a big projector and, have a nice sound system. And then everyone would come and gather 50 or a hundred people to watch the live stream of 
the CEO's town hall. So hybrid and virtual has been around for a long, long time. As a company, our earliest documentation goes back to the mid 90s. And even just so much of a, a, a teleconference, you know, I, I remember setting up a few Gettners, the English, the French, and then we email people the PowerPoints to follow along, you know, hybrid and virtual has been around for a while. People have not been able to fly in from Japan or UK or wherever, like this has happened before. I think people kind of forget that. And, and like I said, just reimagining that experience and being, uh, being a, a mentor for our clients, being, uh, you know, supportive of our clients and, and count, counseling and consulting them and making them understand what's possible. I think that's going to be the way of the future for sure. Did that answer your question? Hopefully. <laughs> that, that was a great answer for sure. For sure. I appreciate that. And I, I'll shoot it to Ed real quick. You had something you wanted to. Uh, no, I've, uh, well, so sorry. Yes. Um, so, I just got like totally lost in everything you were saying. And I was actually uh, going back to that marketing thing before I get to my last point. You, uh, we were talking the other day and you found a way to market yourself as a, as a salesperson that I thought was interesting with the video thing that you, we were talking about. So you, you. Oh, Vidyard. Yeah. So you, you are doing some, uh, you know, even though that's not your principal thing, you've, uh -huh. you've marketed yourself and your own personal brand as a, as a salesperson to your clients. So, um, I don't know we have too much time to get into it, but I did want to ask you, uh, what are your plans uh, for the future? What are you looking to to do moving forward and next? What's what's next for Disa? So personally, professionally, what angle, what what hat would you like me to wear when I answer this question, Ed? Um, I mean, <laughs> whatever hat yeah. you want to answer the yeah, question for. How about that one? Well, so I had this crazy pipe dream back in 2016 that I was going to be a fit, a competitive fitness model. So maybe I'll revisit that. I don't know. I lost 25 pounds since COVID and I'm definitely up in my game. So I, I think I found them. I was going to say, <laughs> I think I, found, I, think I found them for you too, but you know, yeah. uh, they're, so they're I, all, I all below right, about right here. I don't know that I'll be competitive with it, uh, especially uh, once I went down that whole rabbit hole, I kind of found out a little bit more about that community and I'm, I'm not too interested in being a part of it, especially, you know, to get to the next level. There's a lot of uh, people who are using and mm -hmm. doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, so I'm not really prepared for that. Like, that's not how bad I I'm not a very competitive person, but uh, definitely I would love to get some sort of uh, personal training certifications. I, I already do a little Zoom fitness group. If anyone's interested, it is women's only, but um, I'm happy to uh, look at uh, bringing, bringing something in that the guys can participate in too. So we just do it on Zoom and I just kind of yell at you and I learn moves on YouTube and, and show you how to do them way more fun than some silly skinny girl who has no uh, zest to the video. Um, but yeah, so I have tons of fun doing my fitness. And then I also would really love to uh, buy a cottage or build a cottage. That's my five-year plan. And right now I'm currently single and looking. So that'll be, <laughs> that'll well, be nice. Everybody, yeah. you know, I'm, yeah. No. So would, on top would of like to, uh, to have somebody in my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> so on top of everything we've learned about you tonight, you also lead a fitness group on zoom. I don't understand. Yeah. We work out six days a week. <laughs> what? So you have to have more than 24 hours in your days because there's no way some witchcraft theory at foot. Yeah. Meanwhile, I need to borrow some of that. Mean, meanwhile, I'm sitting over here and my evening snack is a homemade donut that my wife made today. That is delicious. Ooh, yeah. Yummy. So I'm clearly Never not wrong following. With donuts. I'm Nothing not, wrong with donuts. I'm not but, following uh, your path, Disa, sadly, but. In the interest of time, it is 9.05, so we always end up going late anyway. Disa, I just want to thank you for being here and uh, sharing your story and all the information that you have with us tonight, even though uh, Omar, you know, invites you on and then bails at the last minute. No, I'm only <laughs> kidding. I'm only kidding. Listen, I love everybody here with every bit of passion. You guys have welcomed me so much into the community, so anything that I can do for you guys, I love doing for you guys. Uh, so I would just want to thank you guys for allowing me to be doing what I'm doing here. 
Uh, so that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, here, I really, so. I really just want to thank you guys for having me. I'm super honored. And, you know, when you guys brought me in as a panelist, I was like, they're going to find out. They're going to figure out that I don't really know what the heck I'm doing. They're not like, why do these guys want me around? But you guys have been so supportive. And AV Educate is really, I feel like you guys are going to be a huge in instrument instrumental in the diversity that our, our industry really needs, both with bringing more women in, and also more uh, ethnicities as well, I would say for sure, like that's going to be a big focus for Encore as well as making sure that we're addressing those um, and making sure that equal pay, all that good stuff is is addressed too. Uh, not that it's a, a huge issue, but yeah, naturally, you know, you guys, I feel like this community is is going to convince a lot of women that you can do it. It's not easy, you know. My, uh, my requirements for my work was back when I was a technician to be able to lift 65 pounds. So that's where working out comes in. But, you know, I, I feel like you guys are doing such a great thing. And to the 25 people who have been tuned in this whole time, I can't believe you've listened to me talk for an entire hour. You guys are fabulous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, well, and hopefully they'll leave here and they'll go visit your website and they'll be able to listen to. Listen, some I already of your have music. it up. I'm going to be jamming out to it here in a little bit, whether it's personally or on stream live. It doesn't matter, but I will be jamming to it one way or another. Awesome. And I just want to add be before we close out for the night, um, you know, obviously, thank you for being here so much. You know, like everybody else has been saying, the community has been loving that you're here with us. I I'm loving the information you've been giving us and the honesty. And, and, and honestly, this has been a great talk. I just wanted to real quick say, you made a quick comment about payment stuff, and, and I totally agree with you. If you can do a job I can do, there shouldn't be a pay issue just because you're a girl. That's ridiculous, and that needs to change in the industry. And I, I hope that, you know, with us here and everything we're doing, not just Ed and Chris and myself and Austin who, who are, you know, pushing this and driving this, that, that with people like you and people that are coming with us and helping with us in the community, that we can make these things more normal because that, that shouldn't be a reason at all just because you're a female that you should get anything less than what we do. If you can do the same job I can do, you should get the same pay. No questions about it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm super, I've said it multiple times on this show and on other episodes we've done, Ed said it, Chris has said it, there's, there's no reason there should be a difference. So None. hopefully, I hope, I hope your vision of us does become reality because I'd really love to, to um, make sure that, you know, this is a diverse group as, as it is coming, becoming to be and, and it stays that way and that conversations like that are happening. And I think it, you know, maybe we should bring you back for a conversation like that and, uh, and get some other women involved who are interested if they want to about that, but um, well, that is a hot topic for sure, for sure. It is a hot, well. There's a lot of yeah. things when it comes to women that are that I don't feel yeah. should be, and a lot of times I feel a little taken back because I don't notice these things. Obviously, because I'm I'm a, I'm a male, but I don't notice it because I don't I don't treat women, in my opinion, differently than what they should be treated. But and I think that's the biggest well, part. Without without diving into a whole nother subject in a whole nother hours worth of conversation. Well, the funny thing is, I have been subject to it. So now, dun, see, dun, dun, dun. So, you'll yeah, have to so stay tuned for that agree. talk. I, I will tell you. I definitely agree. We need to <laughs> yeah. do a women in AV type situation, just like Iris said, because I'm like Omar. I don't see any difference. If you can do the same job as me, why shouldn't you garner the same pay as me? It's just plain and simple. It and, is. and that's and I'm with Omar 100 percent. I don't maybe I don't see it that way. So I don't notice it as much. Uh, but I do notice it ever so slightly where people are like, oh, I'm not. I, I ra First of all, I've noticed I'm going to give you the job over this person because you're a male and that's a female. And I have seen I'm going to pay you this rate over that rate because you're a male and that's a female. And that's wrong. If you can do the same job as me, no matter how skilled or how knowledgeable I am. You might be more knowledgeable than me, but they don't want to hire you, and that's a problem. So, again, without going on a whole other tangent here, that's where I'm just going to leave it at. I feel that's uh, you not the, going on a tangent, Bodie. I can go on an hour <laughs> rant on this. Listen, I have literally done. I've okay. I did a 24 hour stream. Two hours of my stream was talking how about how women in the industry are completely bastardized for being women in the industry. And that's my take on it. I'm new to the industry and I might get thrown out of it before I even freaking get into it because that's how I feel. That's just my well, take on it. So. I, I really hope that all the perseverance that I have had in the last 15 years will help pave the way for, for women in AV. And honestly, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to have those candid conversations and those open conversations. It's not always easy, uh, but believe me, 
as much as I want diversity, I also feel like we need people who know the job. So, you know, this is not glamorous. I have been in the back of a tractor trailer at 4 a.m. being yelled at that I am not strong enough to help lift boxes and that sort of thing. So, you know, like it's it's not glamorous and it's like, okay, I'm here at 4 a.m. with my steel toes on like everyone else and I've been here for 20 hours. So, leave me the F alone, you know, let me, let's just load this truck and get out of here. Who cares if I'm a girl, but yeah. So uh very hot topic for sure. And uh I don't think my employers would want my name on that if I participate <laughs> in that one, but yeah, uh, for sure. For well, sure. It's challenging, but you still have to be able to do the work. You still have to know how to connect a mixing console. You still have to know how to bring out a room without your friggin' cell phone, you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of tools to make it easy for the, the next generation, for sure. But I think that those fundamentals still need to be there. And you need to have a great work ethic because our clients are going to call us on our bull S, you know, so. And on that note, I'm going to kill it before we keep going on this. But I will say um, to what you're saying just now, if if we need to hold that torch, AB Educate will definitely hold it up because uh, – the three of us are gonna head. Yes, we're believers in that. And if any woman's afraid to do that, we'll help you hold it up and we'll, we'll we'll push it. So, I'm not about the whole you know make a whole girl section separate from the men's section. Like we need to coexist. That's a whole other conversation. But anyways, I'm gonna close it out with the sponsor for tonight. I, Thank you. I just don't want to share my bathroom with you guys. Okay. Anyways, thank you for being here tonight, everybody. I appreciate it. I appreciate the the comments in the community and everybody. Thank you for letting me on, guys. I, I sorry that I came on so late. I had another award going on here tonight. Um, I'm I'm in Texas and honestly. I totally forgot about the time shift and uh, Chris and Ed were like, uh, you know, you're an hour behind us, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, so who's going to come on tonight? Uh, so that's how that went down. But uh, again, I'm going to throw this sponsor up real quick. Thank you guys for being here again. And uh, again, we'll see you Monday. And Ed, do you want to real quick, Monday night, what we got going on? So Monday night, we are looking at um, uh, Jeff Widgren and I are going to lead a conversation on Zoom meetings, uh, tips, tricks, and new feature reviews. So we're going to look at some of the new features. The last time we did uh, a Zoom episode was back in the summer. So we're gonna look at what's evolved since then. Uh, what are some of the tips and tricks that we found to make your meetings easier to run uh, or up the production value for, you know, making it a little bit better of a Zoom experience, even if you're still staying within the Zoom platform. So that's Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time on AV Tech Talks. And we, uh, we did get a new webinar uh, account, thanks to our friends at the DVE store. Uh, so if you join our webinar, it'll be in full 1080p. Um, and we're looking to stream to some more places soon too. So uh, a lot of lot of stuff coming up. Thank you for that, thank you for that. And for the podcast side, we are sponsored by... And again, thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. We'll see you Monday and we'll see you Wednesday.